In my last video talking about men's rights, I apparently might have phrased a few things a bit poorly. However, the core issues I believe still stands. Now, to be fair, to begin this whole thing, I was drunk when I did it, and I might have not phrased everything as I should have. However, that does not change the fact that I believe the core of my issues stands quite nicely. Drunk, sober, whatever have you. But before I address that, I want to address some of my commenters. One of the things that really tickled my fancy was the accusations that I was doing this for approval from my girlfriend. Now, first and foremost, I don't need that approval. I make my videos for me and me alone. If you appreciate them and enjoy them, that's fine and great, and I welcome you to do that. But I make these videos to express my beliefs, my points of view, and my ideas. I don't make them for the approval of anyone else, and quite frankly, if you don't believe that, I could not give any fucks. I don't need your approval, and I don't need her approval to make these videos. It's just the way it is. Secondly, it's fun where I got a little ad hominem in my uh, video here, but a lot of people who responded to my video with their negative comments, well, the first thing they did was do that back to me, whether talking about how I was just doing this for approval or whatever have you. And you want to make a good argument against something, whether or not it's poorly worded or however, ad hominem is not the way to go. I should have done it, but you know what? You want to respond to it with the same sort of thing back? You're, you're not proving your point, trust me. But all of my commenters aside and all of that stuff, I want to reiterate what I was talking about with a much more clear perspective. Which is, I'm not saying that men's rights activists are completely, totally, and altogether wrong. They do have legitimate issues. You know, there is a disparity in the whole custody issue and with false rape accusations. Those things exist. But, but, when I have seen and talked to and heard from and read so many different things from men's rights activists, it's not about that. It's never really about that. It might start with that, but it comes down to this one core argument over and over, which is that women gaining independence detracts from manliness somehow. It ends up being where, oh, women aren't staying home anymore, so men don't find them as attractive and they're just turning into dykes now because they're getting independence or women are not sexy because they're they don't have to wear dresses anymore and it all comes down to a bunch of first world whining bullshit from a bunch of guys who can't handle the fact that the world has changed and i'm sorry if somehow this offends you me saying this you think well i'm different i don't think that maybe you are different maybe you don't think any of that and you know what that's great i hope you don't I hope you're one of those people that has a reasonable view that says, well, yes, these things are issues, but I need to keep some perspective. Because I think that's where so many people lost it here, was perspective. When I went on my tirade about how men are responsible for this, that, and the other, and how historically speaking, yes, I may not have put that so well. However, I offer that as perspective to counter these arguments that these men's rights activists are making on the extreme about how, well, men have just as many issues and how women have it so easy. And Well, it wasn't that long ago, actually, that women could not vote here in this wonderful land we have of America. Or, you know, Saudi Arabia, they still can't drive, vote, or have their own freedom of movement without a male chaperone or husband taking them everywhere. And if we look all across the world, not from an American-centric perspective, but a worldwide view, we can see that women's rights issues are very real and are in turmoil to this day. There are parts of the world where a woman can be burned to death at the stake for witchcraft for basically being a woman. Or where child sex slavery and for women exists and is tacitly approved by the state in the form of child marriage. And it's not boys generally being married to older women, it's young girls being married to older men. Overwhelmingly. In fact, almost completely. That's the issue. And yes, from an America or First World perspective, the men's rights activists have a lot to say here about the disparity in the legal system with rape and custody and abortion, all this other stuff. But when we look at this from a grander angle, a worldwide perspective, we see that women's rights 
is still a battle being fought, is still something people are dying for. And when we have that as a comparison to honestly put some perspective to this, we, I think most of us could see that while that doesn't invalidate the complaints that the men's rights people have, it should lessen the severity of what they're saying. It should lessen the immediacy of it where we could say, yes, what they're saying does matter and it does have impact and we should work on these things. But let's all admit honestly that there's not an equal society for women to be taking power over men for. We do not have a truly equal society. Hell, even in America, there's still the glass wall that women face when it comes to employment. They still have a disparity in pay grade between men and women, and it does not favor the women, I assure you. Well, now, let's talk about abortion, shall we? Well, I've heard men talk about how, oh, well, we don't have as much say over abortion and everything. Well, that's... And maybe kind of true, but at the same time you're ignoring the ridiculous level of discrimination that goes on with women in this case. Where in my own state of Virginia, they tried to make it so that women needed an ultrasound before they could have an abortion. I mean, it's not like they, they don't know what's in them. It's not like, oh, well, well, I thought there was a rock inside of my belly. Who knew that was a baby? No, that's not how this works. And what is the grounding for this? Why was this required? Or how about the fact that we still have senators going on about legitimate rape? I mean, really? Like, you're going to tell me there is no discrimination against women or no misunderstanding of women from the men in power? No, by the way, how many male senators to female senators? How many male representatives to female representatives? Where's the ratio? I'll tell you what, doesn't match up with the gender ratio in the society. It's not like there's an equal number of men to women in Congress, although there is actually slightly more women than men in, well, the world. How is that representative? How, I mean, if you want to hash hairs here and sit there and say, well, men have it bad or whatever, well, how is it actually representative of women when most of the people in Congress and representatives are men and the president has never been a woman, ever? In the history of America, there's never been a woman president. I don't think you can sit there and say there's a completely equal representation. And you can argue, well, they're elected to represent everybody no matter what, but, but I think if that were more true, we'd have more women elected. If we're trying to represent people here, or for that matter, I hear custody brought up a lot where women get all this favoritism over men and stuff, but this does happen. Don't get me wrong, this is an issue. However, it is not this dire issue like I've heard it painted so many times where men can never get custody of their children or court just looks at the woman and says, it's her baby. That's not how it works. And I think there's so much misrepresentation of that problem going on that it takes it to the realm of farcical nonsense. When you have guys running around screaming that women take all the children basically, and yes, I've heard that argument where men can't ever win a custody battle and the courts just give the baby to the woman even if she's a crackhead. That's not really true. Maybe it happens sometimes. And with a lot of these other issues too, I think it falls in the same vein where we have so many guys in these men's rights activist groups over-representing the danger and the commonality of these issues where they make it sound like this happens all the time, every day, that just guys lose their children all the time and men have no say over anything to do with their children in custody, but that's not true. I know personally guys who have won custody of their children from their ex-wives because of men multitude of issues. You can't sit there and tell me that it doesn't happen or that the courts always side with the women because that's a lie. Again, I want to reiterate, I don't have a problem with men's rights people who talk legitimate issues and they keep them in a framed perspective that's based on the real world. I don't have a problem with that. Men's rights issues are important too, especially when we're talking about the real disparity in custody battles and rape and abuse that happens, yes. However, I don't usually encounter these reasonable men's rights activists. I really don't. Usually on the internet, in person, talking to people, whatever, I usually, in fact, almost always encounter the ones that take these issues and basically turn them into a thinly veiled uh, attack on women's rights. If it was about promoting men's rights purely, I could really get behind that more than I can when it 
generally comes across to me as a party of people grumbling that women have rights to. That's what it comes across to me as. And if you can't appreciate the fact that I was making a rant, letting loose some of my vitriol that I feel towards these ignorant people, and if you are one of those people that think that, oh, well, women can work, so that is an attack on my rights, then you are an ignorant son of a bitch. And you are fully deserving of everything I said in my rant. But no, I'm not targeting the people who are just talking about, well, this issue and this issue should be addressed more fully, and I think that there's misrepresentation here and here on these issues, and if you're handling it in a reasonable, realistic manner, you aren't the target. And I'm sorry, well, not at all. I'm not at all sorry if you felt like I was personally attacking you by my previous video. If you listened to that and somehow thought that I was personally targeting you out of everybody out there and that you needed to jump up and defend yourself, well, I really think that you have some self-examination to do. Why was it that my diatribe against, and I was pretty clear in my examples, I was pretty sure about the types of men's rights people I was talking about, if you feel like that applied to you, well, you might want to examine your prerogatives in life a little bit. Because I'll tell you one thing, when we look at the worldwide perspective, you're just talking about first world problems. Again. Find me some places where men have to deal with the same kinds of issues, horrendous issues across the world. And I'm not saying America, I'm saying the world. Find me at this, some kind of place where they have to deal with half of the lethal, enslaving, discriminatory, raping bullshit that they have to deal with. Look at the Middle East. Not all of it's bad. Don't, I'm not saying everywhere in the Middle East is bad. But where it is bad, it's quite bad. And especially where, like, let's say Africa, India, that... Or how about that girl in uh, Afghanistan who got shot for trying to learn? You don't have these sorts of issues, men, at least not in America or across the world even. Keep some perspective, damn it. Yeah, you've got issues and problems to talk about, but don't sit there and wave them around like it's the same sort of, oh, well, we have an equal leg to stand on as feminists. No, no, you don't. Because, well, feminists had to fight to get the right to vote, the right to own property. They had to fight for some of the most basic rights we think is fundamental. They had to fight for it. Now, I'm going to do another video where I talk about the feminists, too. So don't feel too picked on, men's rights activists. There are the feminists out there who are insane, and they are feminazis and all those terms. But Let's stop pretending that any woman who talks about women's rights is a dyke or a feminazi or someone who just can't get laid. And yes, I've heard all of those things from men's rights activists. Own up to it a little bit, will you? Just something to think about.